One of the things we easily forget about Haydn is that when he was writing his symphonies, a new work was big business. There was money to be made, and when Haydn came to London in the 1790s, he found himself pretty much in a ratings war, a bit like The Voice versus Britain's Got Talent or X Factor. It was all about getting people in and making sure that the experience was something that people would talk about and remember. Now, it just so happened that when Haydn was in London in the 1790s, so was one of his brilliant pupils, Pleyel. And he knew that Pleyel was putting on a serious show and was major competition, so Haydn needed a hit. He needed something that people would talk about and be thrilled by. And so what he did was literally thump the timpani, wake them up, stir up the audience, and make a huge amount of excitement that people would love, they would roar and cheer about it. And actually, one of the amazing things that we also forget about Haydn is that he really was up for audience engagement. He wanted people to cheer and to whoop and to cry out when things happened. None of this stony silence, listening to a piece from beginning to end, neatly waiting uh, for the last chord. No, he wanted his audience right in there with him, in the action, responding to it and engaged. And this is what this piece is all about. <laughs> Now it's the second movement, the Andante, that we're listening to now, which gives this symphony its name and its celebrity status. As you can hear, it starts so simply. Just the common notes in each scale, just dancing up and down on the strings. It's so naive, it's so innocent, it's like a children's nursery rhyme. And then suddenly, out of the blue, Everyone comes in together and shocks the audience. They talked about women fainting. It was such a surprise to have this sudden accent from the orchestra, the Palkenschlag. But it's actually what follows in this piece, quite apart from this joke, this audience gag. It's what follows which is really amazing. This simple start leads to the whole drama of storm of a minor key and virtuosic writing all kinds of interplay between ideas and remodeling of the tune. He turns it upside down, he does all kinds of crazy things. Um, he keeps the audience on their toes with that simple tune that seemed to be quite content where it was. And that is the introduction to Haydn. That's the story of Haydn, the king of symphonies, a man, the consummate master of how to present an idea and how to make it pull you from your seat into the orchestra and into his world. He was a genius and a smash hit.